Dobrý den. Aha, studenti. Ciao. <laughs> As to be able to inflect nouns to form various cases, because <laughs> we are not done yet with the masculine. We must know what paradigm the Clanton group and noun belongs to. The first criterion is the grammatical gender, masculine, feminine or neuter. Chlap weet mužské rod. Mužské rod. Hm? Hm? To je síla. Odvaha. Nebojácnost. Svaly. Muž. Pes. Pes. Muž. Mužský rod. Tak. For masculines, there is an important subdivision into inanimate, inanimate, and hard and soft. Tvrdý jako ocel. Měkký. Within the framework of each gender, there are several declension paradigms according to the ending of the noun. Each paradigm functions as a pattern in Czech vzor. vzor. For the masculine yenimate gender, the paradigms are pan, muž, předseda, Soudce and Mluvčí. For the masculine inanimate, Hrad and Stroj. We saw that in Czech grammatical tradition, consonants are divided into hard, and soft, and c. We mention it because the nouns ending in a hard consonant belong mostly to the hard paradigms. Pan, předseda, hrad. The nouns ending in a soft consonant belong mostly to the soft paradigms. Muž, soudce, mluvčí, stroj. What I didn't tell you about was the existence of ambivalent consonants. B, P, V, F, Z, S, M, L. The most important consequence of such ambivalent consonants is that the nouns ending with an ambivalent consonant belong mostly to the hard paradigms. If it happens that a noun ending in an ambivalent consonant follows the soft paradigm, the soft declension pattern, the user, even a native speaker, has to be advised. And sometimes an ambivalent noun will, instead of joining one of the established paradigms follow a sub-paradigm. So everyone, the foreign and the native speakers, have to be advised. And this is the case of the masculine inanimate noun Hrbitov. Hrbitov. This was quite a long introduction. What happened this summer? What happened in Czech Republic this summer? I have been there. And far from being idle, I have thought of um, you. You, the brave Czech student. 
I thought of you as I was discovering a cemetery. Hřbitov. A military cemetery. Vojenský hřbitov. From Austro-Prussian War or the Seven Weeks War, 1866. Located in the castle alley above the city of Nachod, surrounded by ancient chestnut, linden and aspen trees, the site of the present cemetery was consecrated at the very place where another burial site from the Seven Years' War, 1756-1763, has been created. You will notice a white and some cross with Latin, German and Czech inscriptions indicating the exact position of this much older cemetery. It's quite amazing that the number seven, seven weeks and seven years wars is omnipresent. I came there on the 7th of July at seven o'clock and there are seven cases in the Czech declension. After the visit I wondered what paradigm the masculine inanimate substantive Hřbitov belonged to. Since its ending is an ambivalent consonant V. According to the above mentioned rule, Hřbitov should belong to the paradigm Hrad. It doesn't. It doesn't belong either to the paradigm Stroj ending with a soft consonant. It belongs to a sub-paradigm less. I've discovered the existence of a sub-paradigm only because I was searching for a pattern for Hrbitov. So hmm. To give you now an idea of how look a masculine substantive declined in the seven cases, we will take the masculine inanimate noun Hrbitov and observe if and how it matches or not the third paradigm less. So what are the seven cases of Check the country. Numbers are important. We will use them. So associate number with the name of the case, please. How would look has bit of decline through these seven cases? Hřbitov, Hřbitova, Hřbitovu, Hřbitov, Hřbitové, Hřbitově, Hřbitové. In order to make some sense out of this, we will use pattern phrases of my invention. Přede mnou je les. Přede mnou je hřbitov. OK. Stojím u lesa. Stojím u hřbitova. Jdu k lesu. Jdu ke hřbitovu. K lesu is easy. Jdu k hřbitovu would be little bit difficult, so that's why we will join the E and we will say Jdu ke hřbitovu. Jdu k lesu. Jdu ke hřbitovu. It's more beautiful, sweeter sounding. Vidím les. Vidím hřbitov. Lese. Hřbitové. Mluvím o lese. Mluvím o hřbitově. Dron letí nad lesem. Dron letí nad hřbitovem. So yes, I dare say it matches. Pane, I am using the vocative here. Pane, madam, pojďte se mnou na hřbitov. I am using the accusative here with the preposition na, always accusative plus na, always. Na hřbitov? 
Na, das wird doch nein, du. Ah, kennst du dich da wo? Nein, Tiff. Kennst du dich da wo? Tak nein, du. Tak sagst du dich da wo? Ich kann es nicht vergessen. Nein. Nemluvte mi o Hřbitově. Přestaňte se Hřbitovem. Na Hřbitově bych se bál. Naschledanou.